kiddos, we're back. We're going to do some more vocab today. We'll have a demonstration during this video that will hopefully illustrate some of the vocabulary terms we're going to discuss. So we're going to talk about saturated solutions, unsaturated solutions, and then a term you might think I'm making up. It's called supersaturated solutions, or a supersaturated solution. So it's not a made-up term. It's for real. And we'll get to that, and I'll show you a cool little demo related to supersaturated solutions during this video. So let's define saturated first. You probably already know intuitively what it means. A saturated solution simply means that the solvent has dissolved as much solute as possible. at a given temperature. So when you've dissolved as much solute as you can at a particular temperature, you have what's called a saturated solution. So imagine if you could, um, you have a beaker of water and you start dumping in, I don't know, some potassium chloride. Uh, potassium chloride's ionic, water's polar, you guys know that like dissolves like, so you start dumping it in spoonful by spoonful and stirring your water as you go, you're going to get to a point where you put a spoonful or a few crystals of potassium chloride in your water and they're just going to sink to the bottom. They will not go into solution. That's because the solvent has dissolved as much solute as possible at that particular temperature. Now you're going to see in a minute that temperature does play a role and the ability for your solvent to dissolve solute. We'll get to that in just a second. So what do you think unsaturated is? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so we're going to say our solvent has not dissolved as much solute as possible at a given temperature. So before you reach that point, as you're adding potassium chloride to water, before you reach that point where the crystals settle to the bottom, um, they are dissolving in the water. So you have an unsaturated solution until you reach that point where no more can dissolve at a given temperature. So let's take a look at this graph here. Here we have the solubility in grams of solute per 100 grams of water. And let's take a look at potassium chloride since that's what we've been talking about. That's that orange colored line here. And you can see that at room temperature, I can dissolve, let's see, oh, about 35 grams approximately of potassium chloride in 100 grams of water. Once I place that much potassium chloride in my water, I can't dissolve anymore. It is a saturated solution. But what if I've only placed 20 grams in there? Yeah, it's unsaturated. I can still dissolve more at that temperature. Well, what if I heat my potassium chloride solution up to, let's say, 70 degrees Celsius? So it looks like at that higher temperature, I can dissolve almost 50 grams of potassium chloride. So let's make up a scenario. Let's say we're at room temperature, and we dump in 35 grams of potassium chloride. You would be correct in saying, Mr. Hummer, that is a saturated solution at 20 degrees Celsius. All right, now let's put it on a hot plate and warm it up to 70. What type of solution do you have now? Yeah, you've only got 35 grams in there at 70 degrees Celsius. So now it becomes unsaturated. What do you have to do to saturate it? That's right, you're going to have to add more potassium chloride to get it to be saturated at that higher temperature. And you will notice that most solids, when we increase the temperature of the solvent, dissolve better. Okay? All right. Well, what were to happen if we now had a saturated solution at 70 degrees Celsius? So we had about 50 grams of potassium chloride in there. What were to happen if we took that off the hot plate and cooled it down to room temperature again? Huh. Well, at room temperature, I can only dissolve 35 grams. What would happen to these other 15 grams? Yeah, they would probably crystallize out. They would precipitate out. They couldn't stay dissolved in your sol solvent any longer. So the excess would crystallize out, 
probably settle to the bottom of the beaker, maybe crystallize along the sides of the beaker, but they couldn't stay dissolved because at that lower temperature, you can only dissolve 35 grams. Does that sort of make sense? All right, well, let's define this last term here on this page, supersaturated, the one you might think is made up. <laughs> supersaturated simply means the solvent has dissolved more solute than, uh, we're going to say theoretically possible, at a given temperature. So it's dissolved more than it normally can at a given temperature. And so since it can dissolve more than it can at that temperature, we say that it is super saturated. All right, let's look at our graph again. Let me clear this off for you. And let's come up with another scenario, okay? Um, let's pick up on potassium chlorate, shall we? All right, so at 30 degrees Celsius, I can dissolve about 10 grams of potassium chlorate in 100 grams of water. All right, let's warm that all the way up to 90 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's see. Um, I only have 10 grams in there. Looks like I'm going to have to add uh, a bunch more, about 30 grams more to get it saturated at 90 degrees Celsius. So now I have a total of 40 grams in there at 90 degrees Celsius. Now there are some solutions, and I'm not sure potassium chlorate's one of them. I don't think it is. But there are some solutes that when you cool them down, so when I cool this back down to room temperature, so right here, I can have 40 grams that would stay dissolved in my 100 grams of water. That would mean I would have 30 grams more than I normally can at that particular temperature dissolved in my water. So it is more than saturated, it's super saturated. Now these solutions tend to be relatively unstable and it doesn't take much for them to go from their super saturated state back down to their saturated state. You could shake them a little bit or vibrations by tapping the side of the glass or adding something called a seed crystal which means a tiny crystal of potassium chlorate added to that supersaturated solution, and it will cause it to come out of its supersaturated state and go back into its saturated state. So you're wondering what that might look like. Well, I have a video to show you, and I'm going to be using a compound called sodium acetate. So sodium acetate does form a very, very nice supersaturated solution. So take a look at that video now. I think you're really going to like it. And then we'll come back and we'll finish up this page of notes. See you in a sec. Okay. Just really quick, I'm going to add one tiny seed crystal. I'm not sure if you can see on the tip of that scoopula there. Right at the tip, we're going to add that to my super saturated solution of sodium acetate. And we will see it go from a super saturated state to a saturated state in just a few seconds. Isn't that cool? So we see that the sodium and acetate ions recognize the crystalline structure of that seed crystal I just added. And they add to it. And we form one big crystal. Now when I tilt this to the side, you can see that's a, it looks like a big chunk of ice, doesn't it? So now we're back. There's a little bit of water in there. You might be able to see it, but we're back to our saturated state right now. So we've gone from super saturated to saturated just a couple of seconds. All right, hope you like that. Bye-bye. All right, I told you you'd like that one. Now, before we wrap up for the day, let me just list a couple of factors that affect solvation. That means the ability of your solute to dissolve in your solvent. So there are three that I have listed here. Number one, agitation. So if I agitate something, that means I'm stirring it or I'm shaking the uh, this, uh, the beaker up or my flask, this will move dissolved solute particles away from the contacted surfaces and will allow new collisions between solute and fresh solvent particles. So you can imagine that right around the crystal that you're trying to dissolve, it's pretty saturated with uh, solute particles, but if I stir that, I'm moving 
fresh solvent into contact with my crystal and the saturated solution is being moved away. That's simply called agitation, which is mixing or stirring. Number two, um, I could increase the surface area of the solute. A greater surface area allows more collisions to occur. So how do I increase the surface area? Well, think of a sugar cube versus powdered sugar. If I had a 10 gram sugar cube, there's like my sugar cube there, that's 10 grams. It looks like my solvent can attack the surface of that cube. Don't you guys agree? Right on the surface. But what if I took that 10 gram sugar cube and I pulverized it and I turned it into powdered sugar and I put that same 10 grams in my beaker of water? <laughs> it would dissolve a lot faster, wouldn't it? Because I have more contact with the individual particles that I'm trying to dissolve. So increasing the surface area um, of the solute will increase the rate of solvation. And then number three, as we saw in the graph just a minute ago, raising the temperature. Now raising the temperature increases the speed of the particles, thus increasing the number of collisions and increasing the rate at which solvation can occur. So three factors that affect solvation, agitation, increasing the surface area, in heating your solvent up. Okay? All right, that's good enough for today, kiddos. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.